hopeful sign from New York is our first topic today on CNN 10. I'm Carl LaDuce, obviously not in our studio for the time being, and I know many of you are not watching from the place where you normally see the show, so thank you for taking the 10 minutes to watch. Here's what's going on in the Empire State. It's the epicenter of the COVID-19 outbreak in America. More than 75,000 cases have been confirmed in New York. So what's hopeful about that? Okay, so we have 75,000 cases in New York, but looking at the entire United States, we have a total right now of 204,000 in the United States. So that means that there's 40% of what we have for um, confirmed cases are all just in New York City. Yeah. Well, even though the disease is still spreading there and the number of deaths are increasing, the rate of infection might be slowing down. And here's what we mean. The state's governor says the number of coronavirus cases was doubling every two days at one point. But then it seemed to slow down, doubling every three days, then four days, now it's every six days. And a CNN count found that New York's daily increase in coronavirus cases over the past week was less than a third of the daily increase in the week beforehand. So what all this may indicate is that the spread of coronavirus in America's hardest hit state may be significantly slowing down. This isn't proven yet. There's a backlog in coronavirus testing there, so we don't know the true number of cases right this moment. So what they're saying there is, <clears throat> so they think it's slowing down because the ca cases are getting smaller and smaller and smaller because it was doubling every two days, but their testing has stopped. Like they can only test so many people a day and they can only get the information back from the test so many a day because all these workers are overworked and you've got to think about when they're doubling. So if you have two cases and then two days later you have four cases and then two days later you have eight cases, then 16, but they're in the thousands. So if they're doubling and they've got, you know, 30,000, let's say 30,000 tests that they have to do and they have to see if the people have coronavirus, that's a lot of tests. So if they only had 200 that they had to complete, then they would be able to do it fairly quickly, but they have thousands and thousands. So there may be a hundred thousand or more just in New York City, but they're waiting to get the test back. Everything is just so exhausted and they need so much help there because there's so many people that are sick. We also don't know why they're slowing down, if they're slowing down. New York has strict limits on who's allowed to go to work and it's banned parties and celebrations entirely. It's possible that could be having an impact, though the program's only been in place for a week. New York alone has more than 40% of all the coronavirus cases in America, and it's looking for all the help it can get. Help arriving in New York with the Navy hospital ship Comfort. A thousand beds on board to help ease overcrowding in the city's hospitals. In Central Park, a new field hospital reserved for those with the virus. As the governor... Can you imagine? being sick with the coronavirus and then being stuck out here in a park in a tent while you're very very sick in quarantine that would be really scary with the virus as the governor pleads for more help if you don't have a health care crisis in your community please come help us in new york now we need relief. We need relief for nurses who are working 12-hour uh, shifts, one after the other after the other. We need relief for doctors. We need relief for attendants. And we will return the favor. Healthcare workers may be welcome, yet from New England to Texas, officials are increasingly wary of travelers, mandating self-quarantine for those crossing state lines. Hotspots like Chicago, Detroit, and New Orleans continue to see a spike in cases. So these three cities here, this is important, this is a question, it's Chicago, Detroit, and New Orleans. They're spreading very quickly, just like New York. 
So these are very scary places to be right now. And if people are leaving there, they could be carrying the, the virus to somewhere else. And are sounding the alarm. COVID-19 is not considered a foodborne illness. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration says it doesn't know of any cases when someone's caught the disease through the food we eat. But some health officials are concerned there's a small chance the virus could be transmitted through packaging if someone who's sick handles it. So they're suggesting that we throw away our takeout containers, that we wipe down our groceries, and that we wash our hands after touching takeout boxes and containers. Meanwhile, the restaurants that do the cooking... Do you guys wash your um, containers when you bring them home from the grocery store? My mom just pointed this out to me. She said, you know, somebody with the virus could have touched that container, left it there, and then you come over and you touch it yourself. And then you go home, of course, you wash your hands when you get home, but then you go and touch the container again. So that's something very important that we need to start doing. For us or having to change the way they do business in order to stay in business. This is what customers have come to expect when they go to Henry's Louisiana Grill. It's packed, it's loud, and it's full of life. But this is what it looks like now, the hard impact of the coronavirus pandemic. I reckon this to giving blood. Every drop counts. Every little drop, every penny. Chef and owner Henry Chandler gets emotional when he talks about the future of his restaurant. We're about 85% to 90% down on our regular sales. And that's tough. So you think if they made $1,000 a day before, now they're making $100 a day. And he still has employees that need to be paid and he can't have them working there because he can't pay them because the business is really not even open. So everyone in these tourist towns, even like um, Hot Springs, you see the downtown is closed. And again, I've talked to you about um, like Oakland, this is all closed. So all those people who are working now do not have jobs. And the owners of the businesses are not making enough money to even maybe stay open. Up, up, up. And like many restaurants around the country, Chandler's had to figure out how to reopen his restaurant as a pickup only establishment and make the place safer than ever before. This is their new normal now. Staff check for fever at the door. They do not enter the building until we check them. They cannot report to work if they have any temperature, any of the signs of the COVID. All right, I'm sure I'm like many of you. You miss your favorite restaurants. Uh, you want to support the local economy. But you got a question inside you. Is it safe? Is it safe to get the takeout? I actually see takeout food being a really good option for individuals who are trying to limit their exposure to people. Food safety specialist Benjamin Chapman says that's because even though a takeout package may carry the virus, the chances you'll get infected by that is really, really low. And if you get food delivered, Dr. Sanjay Gupta says, leave the food packaging on your front porch. And then when we come in, so they're saying that the packages that you have when you bring the food, then you just open up the packages from the food that you get delivered. Leave the packages outside. This is important. It's a question. Leave your packages outside and then bring the food in so you're not bringing the virus into your house. We sort of wipe any of the surfaces that any of the, the remaining packaging is on and then obviously wash our hands, keeping in mind that it's, it's hand touching and then, then hands to, to face. 